Hello parents, welcome back to another Friday update. This week we're here recording on location at the New Branch Elementary, which is currently under construction. At the end of tonight's video, we'll have a quick quick tour of the site so you get to see kind of what where we're at and what's gonna be in store for when we get to come back. Uh, branch is a little bit, little bit further behind than Bailey uh, just because it was all brand new construction, so there's a lot more to do. Uh, but both schools are looking to be finished here around Christmas break. A few things we want to touch on this week. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the impact aid cards. So we talked about it last week. I'm going to talk about it this week again. Uh, so on, we'll be sending out to all the households um, a envelope. And the envelope is going to be a yellow card. Um, those cards are for us to record all the student counts for impact aid. Impact aid is very important for our district. Uh, the data we gather is necessary, uh, but more importantly, it generates um, a significant amount of funding for us. Uh, if we lose that funding, it'd be, um, it'd be very detrimental to the programs we can offer and, and the resources. And I, I'm sure you know schools already don't get enough to do, to do what we do. Um, so every, every dollar counts. You're gonna get those cards. Uh, we already have an envelope in there with postage paid. Uh, just read the instructions, fill it out, put it back in an envelope, and put it in the mail and send it out to us. Uh, if you don't want to mail it, please feel free to come bring it to any school site, to the district office. Uh, just make sure you get them back. Um, and please make sure you date them October 7th. Uh, one of the little nuances of how those are, have to be collected is they all have to be dated on that same day because um, it's a snapshot in time on that, that day. So if they're dated something else, we'll be coming to bother you and say, hey, can you please fill it out again and put a different date on it for us. Another thing I wanna to touch on is free and reduced. Um, if you haven't already, please go ahead and fill out a free and reduced application. It's on our district website. Uh, you can go to any site and fill out an application. You can use a computer, you can fill it on paper. Uh, you can download it from the website, fill it out and bring it in. Uh, the online one is great. You just fill it out real quick and you're done. It automatically calculates everything, sends it off, uh, and makes sure to check everything so you don't forget to put something down. Uh, we just encourage every family to apply. Um, that way uh, it helps you out. Um, you know, uh, right now we are serving, so we're serving at West Boron Elementary, Boron High School, and Desert High School, as well as a satellite location out at the district office in North Edwards. Um, so you're able to come pick up those meals. Uh, they do follow the, the free, reduced, or full pay standards. So uh, depending on where you qualify, um, we'll determine what, if anything, you pay. So please go ahead and apply for those free and reduced uh, meals. Uh, those help us out, help us out with metrics, um, and help, help us identify where the need is in, among families. Segwaying into that, I want to touch base again on the internet. Um, I want to make sure we're, we're clearing up any confusion. So for families who are free and reduced, that is merely step one to qualify for the modem through Spectrum. Uh, there are many steps beyond that, and we don't have control over any of those steps. Uh, so it goes to Spectrum, Spectrum does their steps and their qualifications, um, and then based on that, they, they either qualify the household or not. Uh, for us, our first step is just free and reduced. So if you started off this year and you had internet, you can't just turn off internet and say, I'd rather get a free modem. It, it sadly doesn't work that way. Um, if you had serviced at that benchmark period, then um, it's very possible that you'll have to go back through Spectrum and get it, get it service turned on again. And more importantly, if you are on any of their special programs, you may or may not qualify again because you were on the program and left. So please, if you have internet through another program, just keep that. Uh, we can't guarantee that you'll, get, you'll qualify for ours and we don't want your household to lose internet and not be able to get it back or get it back at a higher rate. Um, that just, that would not be a great scenario for anyone. So please, um, Again, free and reduce this first step. If you already have internet, please keep it. Don't, don't just can't cancel it and then see what you can do from there because it, it means your student's no longer gonna be able to get online and, and get instruction potentially. Next, um, I want to encourage all households um, for your kids to have your kids in the classroom, be there during the live instruction, um, and try and find a corner or somewhere out of way to try and have the microphones and the cameras on. Uh, one thing we're starting to see in a lot of par parent and staff feedback is now that the, the students are getting comfortable with being in distance learning, on the breaks in that, they're staying there and they're hanging out and they're getting the chat and they're getting that social, emotional development and interaction they need to just stay social. 
Uh, you know, here we're, we're not, they're not going to school, they're not getting to play with their friends, uh, but for the kids that are there with their cameras on, their mics on, they actually are getting some interaction with their friends, and they're building new friendships and hanging out digitally. Um, it's, it's neat to see. It took a little while for everyone to get comfortable with the digital, digital distance learning, but they're starting to adapt and get used to it, and I think we always see that with kids and technology. They, they figure out how to embrace it pretty quick, so if you have that ability, please, please try. It's nothing about trying to monitor your home or anything of that nature. We just want your kids as engaged as possible so they can learn as much as possible. Um, a kid who's not engaged and doesn't, doesn't feel like they're part of that digital classroom is just not going to learn as well as someone who is. And I think that's just the, the standard reality anywhere. Uh, a kid in, the, in school, if they're in classroom and they're not paying attention and they're not engaged, they're not going to be getting as much out of it as a kid who's at least working and trying to stay engaged. Uh, so please try and help us out. Uh, try and keep those cameras on, keep the mics on, and have the kids there. And if it, they're worried about their room, put them, put them in a corner. Have it so the cameras face in a corner. Um, you know, move them around, whatever, whatever it takes. But uh, please do try. We understand for some households there's situations and scenarios that make it not possible, and we understand. Work with your teachers. But um, if it's just uh, they didn't get to clean the kitchen today, um, many of us didn't get to clean the kitchen today. It, it's okay. Uh, we, we would much rather see your kid there in class than worry about whether your kitchen counter was clean. I, I assure you our teachers are more focused on trying to teach all the kids than go and have the time to look at each camera and see what's going on in the background. So um, again, I highly encourage it. We are not mandating it, but it is really, really encouraged. So please, please do everything you can to try and do that. I want to touch base again just on reopening. It's something that came up a bit in the feedback this week. We will absolutely be giving you information when we get to that point. Right now, it is not a matter of just a light switch. We don't get to just reopen. Uh, it's not possible there. It's going to be a very slow, methodical process, and there'll be notifications, and we'll start talking. Um, and we're going to do very small steps to start. We can't. We don't want to risk being one of the districts that have just reopened fully and then have to go back to distance learning. Um, as much as a struggle as distance learning can be sometimes, uh, the only thing worse is going to be th this reality of having to be in distance learning. We try and rush back. It doesn't work, and we have to go right back to distance learning. Um, that lack of consistency is probably going to be a much harder thing to deal with than any other scenario. So we want to make sure that we're staying consistent. Um, we are seeing a lot more students are getting comfortable, a lot more teachers are comfortable right now with distance learning. And we want to maintain that, that comfort and that consistency. And then very gradually, once we have the opportunity to move, uh, Brent will talk a little bit more on even when that's possible, because um, it's not right now, but we will absolutely be conveying that information as we get it and as we know wh where, what the next steps are. With that, I want to hand it over to Brent. He's going to talk a little bit on some instructional things and where we are in the county. Thank you, Trevor. Um, hello, parents, students. Um, I just wanted to kind of piggyback on Trevor's reopening plan. Um, as you know, according to the blueprint for a safer economy plan, we are currently in the purple tier. We will need to meet certain indicators for 14 days for us to move to the red tier. Once in that red tier, we will need to move or meet those indicators for an additional 14 days. If we're able to do so, that's when, we'll, when we are allowed to go ahead and reopen schools for in-person learning. The California Department of Public Health has released and added new guidelines that may affect our progress to that coveted red tier. California Department of Public Health has added a health equity metric, which now takes into consideration disparities in COVID-19 tests by neighborhoods. This, is, this new update may potentially change our direction towards moving to that red tier. We are currently working with Kern County and will continue to update you as information is disseminated to us. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign off with, uh, just wanted to say thank you again for your patience and dedication. Um, please continue to complete the weekly surveys. Um, please go ahead and um, continue with those comments and feedbacks. It really allows us to prioritize our initiatives and it really kind of helps us know how we can help you guys best. Thank you again and have a wonderful weekend.